Hi and good morning. I am in full pajama mode still. Um, it's nine or something like that. Um, been awake for an hour and I had my breakfast and my coffee and now I'm gonna wash some dishes before I take a shower. And I thought I'm gonna make a video while I do the dishes today. So here we are. Um, I posted on my Facebook page yesterday kind of explaining well, min minimally where I've been um, in the sense that I've recorded a ton of videos and then I've deleted them all. Um, I recorded a few like videos while I was getting ready for my days just talking about some things and I wasn't happy with any of them for various reasons, topic wise, um, video itself wise, so they never saw the light of day. So I asked my husband to rinse out his chocolate milk cups before he puts them in the sink, but he doesn't do that ever. Um, Let's see how many of these cups I'm not going to get to wash because I have to let dried up nasty chocolate milk clean or get soaked. Anyways, on my post on my Facebook page, um, which by the way, if you guys are following me here but not on Facebook, um, my Facebook is Felicia Marie Posts, P-O-S-T-S -S stuff. Um, same theme, different language. Um... I share my videos there and occasionally I'll post something there as well. Um, I can guarantee that now that the semester is starting back up, I'm going to be a little bit more active. Um, you guys know I like to record videos while I'm driving um, and I'll be back to my long commutes. So, <sighs> yes, there will be more videos coming soon, more action from me. Anyways, on that post I asked what would be some topics or what kind of content would you guys be interested in hearing about from me? And I wish that I had gone first before I did this to see who it was that posted it. I can't remember who it was who posted it. Now I feel like an a-hole. Um, but somebody commented and was like, oh, you should talk about like what made you want to become an educator. And with the semester starting this week, um, and the fact that I've been in the middle of like pre-semester everything, I was like, you know what? That would actually be a really good topic. <sighs> the one reason why I can't stand when he doesn't rinse the chocolate milk cups, because it stinks. After like a day, it stinks. Blech. Um. So... To kind of tell you guys why I decided to become an educator, I have to go backwards a little bit. So, um, I have always been a reader. Um, I started, I learned how to read when I was three. And I was reading at a sixth grade reading level in the first grade. Um, so reading has always been... My thing, when I was in second grade, I was in the Accelerated Reader program. I can't tell you how many free personal hand pizzas I got from Pizza Hut during the Book It program. So, me and books were a thing. But, it never occurred to me that somehow that could translate to a career. So, when I got older and I was thinking about things I wanted to be as most kids do, I started thinking about, well, what am I interested in, but what can make me a lot of money? And I remember being in ninth or 10th grade, and I really wanted to go into photography. There was like a, I don't know what it would have been back then, what you would have called it, but it was like a a photography school where you took classes via like the mail they would mail you everything and then you would a correspondence degree or something I don't know but 
it seemed like a legit thing and it wasn't super expensive. Um, the thing that I really liked about it was that you got a, like a press pass so that you could get into places to do pictures. And I was like, hell yeah, concerts. Um, but, uh, I would always set these like really high goals for myself, these ridiculous expectations. And I think it was like a version of self-sabotage because I would be like, well, there's no way this is going to happen. So I might as well just not try. Um, which was a really terrible way to look at things, but as a kid, that's what I was doing. So when I wanted to be a photographer, I told myself, I want to be a photographer, but I want to be a photographer for National Geographic. That was my goal. Um, and then when I realized National Geographic really has very few staff photographers, it's mostly freelance, or at least it was at the time. Um, and that the likelihood of me actually getting a job with National Geographic was pretty much non-existent. I gave up. And then I said, I'm going to be a lawyer. Because lawyers make a lot of money. Um, but at the time, because I was ignorant, absolutely, I didn't realize that you could be, you could choose what kind of lawyer you wanted to be. And I was uncomfortable with the fact that I might have to, like, defend criminals. I didn't like that idea. And I think once I realized that that wouldn't have been the case, my expectation was, well, if I'm going to become a lawyer, I'm going to Harvard. And you'd really think that these would be motivational things where it was like, oh yeah, I'm going to tell myself I'm going to go to Harvard and I'm going to bust my ass and I'm going to do really good and get good grades, blah, blah, blah. That... I wish it would have worked that way for me. Um... So I gave up on being a lawyer. Then I had some psychology classes in high school. I've talked about those before and how important those were to me. Um, I decided I wanted to become a psychologist because I really liked the idea of helping people. Um, and along the same time that I wanted to be a psychologist, I also wanted to be a pastry chef. Um, I kind of was going back and forth with those things. Um, I gave up on wanting to be a pastry chef because I had worked in the food service industry for a couple years and I didn't like the culture. I didn't like, it wasn't so much the job, I didn't mind the job. I didn't like the way that management treated employees due to the expectations of the customers. Um, I thought that it was awful. And I didn't like the idea that I'd never get to see my family on like holidays and stuff because I would be working. So I gave up food service. Um, psychology, I gave up psychology because I took three psych classes in college. Um, I took Psych 101 as like an early college thing when I was 16. And I did really, really good in that class. Um, I either got an A or a B, but that was that was it. Um, after that, when I took psych classes, I did really poorly. I had psychological statistics, and even though I have always been bad at math, um, I did I did well on the homework and the in class stuff. Um, if I got a problem wrong, I was able to find my mistakes and fix it. But every time we had a test, even though I had a note card with the formulas and even though it was all the same kind of stuff, I was failing it. I don't know if it was test anxiety or honestly, I believe the professor was making it too difficult on purpose. And I say that as a professor um, and also because I took that professor again for a like early child development class we learn about the psychological and somewhat biological development of humans through childhood and adolescence and I knew that material so well I could recite it backwards to you um, I knew the textbook I knew the material so well but again every test I was failing so I ended up dropping the class and quitting that because I felt like 
if I couldn't pass these foundational classes, there would be no way in heck that I was going to succeed. So I quit. Which, that was probably fair. Um, I probably would have struggled a lot. And struggled not in the, in the good way. So, what happened was around the time that I was giving up on psychology, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I had two experiences simultaneously that turned me into wanting to be an educator. And it took us 10 minutes to get here, but here we are. Um, I was enrolled in a class called History of the Novel, in which we covered fictional writing, novel style, from the first thing we read was Pride and Prejudice, um, all the way up to a book called Gone to Soldiers that was published in the 80s. So we covered everything. We read eight books in 16 weeks. It was super hella intense, but I loved it. I loved the way the professor taught. I loved the material. And I just, I was really enjoying that class. And then while I was in that class, I had come home one day from something. My mom was watching an old black and white movie. And in the movie, there were some, like, some kids who graduated high school and they were having a party. And the dad of one of the kids was telling a different kid, I think, like, his son's best friend or something, that the key to being successful was to find the one thing you would do your whole life for free, that you enjoy doing so much you would do it without getting paid forever, and then find a way to make money doing it. And... For me, it was really obvious. Well, what's something I would do my whole life for free? Uh, read. I would read for free forever. That's legit. And so it kind of hit me. I realized this professor that's teaching this class I'm in, her job is literally to come here and talk to us about books that she likes. And I'm like... You know, that sounds like a pretty legit job. Um, for a little while, I really wanted to teach, or I really wanted to do my PhD and get a job at a research institution, um, the kind of school where maybe you teach one or two classes a semester, but in general, you're focused on your own personal research endeavors and publications. So you're more Ivy League and top tier schools. Yeah, that would have paid me the most money, but I realized after maybe three or four years of teaching, which I realized I've been teaching for seven years, so it took me a little while to realize this, um, that I actually enjoy teaching. Um, so I wouldn't want to be at a research school. Um, I don't like the pressure of... You have to have X amount of publications. You have to do X amount of conference presentations every year. Um, I don't. I don't like that. I don't like people telling me what I have to do in order to be good enough. Um, I like teaching because I like knowing that I'm helping people learn and grow. Um, I'm helping educate and inform up-and-coming generations of kids. I'm teaching them how to be critical thinkers. I'm teaching them how to ask the right questions. I'm teaching them how to do research. I'm teaching them how to question their preconceived notions of things. Um, and that's what I like. I like helping them. I like fostering relationships. Um, teaching, I'm just, it's my thing. And I'm good at it. Um, at least I've been told. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's why I've decided to become an educator. And it was really interesting that that was the topic that was suggested to me because I was just telling, sorry, my dishes are loud. I was just telling someone the other day that once I finish my dissertation and get my PhD, um, that if I can't find a full-time teaching job, in a reasonable time frame, reasonable for me, meaning about a year, 
after getting my dissertation done, then I will probably start looking for non-teaching jobs um, in and out of academia. So maybe like within academia somehow or outside of it. Like for example, Lowe's. Seriously. Um, because as much as I love teaching, um, it's really hard for me to juggle being in the faculty pool for four different schools, um, having to figure out teaching schedules across four different schools every semester, um, and trying to make the best of it while still dealing with the fact that I have a kid, um, I have a significant other, I have, I don't, I have things I want to do. So even though teaching, oh God, I have an itch on my back and it's driving me insane. <gasps> even though I love teaching very much, um, teaching doesn't love me. The pay, the stress, the lack of respect in general from society, from the institutions where I teach, um, it's just taking its toll on me right now, and I need to focus on things like my family, and gee, we'd really like to buy a house. We can't buy a house under the conditions that we are currently in. So that's that. So while I have you here, I have an itchy spot on my back that is this one spot that itches all the time, and I can't make it stop. That was a hair, I think. Anyways. That's why I wanted to become an educator. This ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would. I have dishes to rinse now, so I'm going to peace. And who knows, maybe I will come up with something else to talk about later. We will see. Um, what do you guys do and what made you want to do those things? Tell me, share with me. If you have other ideas for topics you want to see me talk about um, or hear my opinion on, feel free to comment below head over to Facebook um, comment there follow me there and uh, you guys have the best day ever Mwah. love you